I want to show you something. This is my uh, lighting. You can see it kind of casts a glow. I have a purple underglow underneath, as well as some amber lights along the side. I shall not go quietly into that good night. I really can't because my scooter makes a lot more noise than stock. So I shall go voraciously and noisily into the good night. Ha ha! Oh, I just recognized that I have a blinker there telling me that I'm almost out of gas. I will stop for gas up the way here. There's a Toiki Hill not too far from here. Hey folks, Scootin' Fool here. Good to talk with you. Good to be out riding on a nice evening. I don't generally reveal the night of the week, so I'm not a confuse you, but it is a Friday night and I have done with work for the week. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> had an interesting experience, one I have never had before, because most people in America seem to be inhibited with this idea that you cannot go up and talk to people. So, I don't know how this happened. I, I will admit that part of me was thinking, okay, is am I trying to be con? Should I double check and make sure my, my uh, wallet is still there when we're done with this conversation? I was in John Hur's market in Millersville doing some shopping for the house I work at, and a young man, Austin is his name, comes up and asks me what I was doing. I'll admit, it's a little odd. I'm standing there with a clipboard and a shopping cart and just going through and randomly taking stuff and putting it in the cart. And I explained that I work at a group home with people with disabilities, and part of my job is to do the shopping and manage the menus and so on. And we got to talking. I talked about being a scooter guy and stuff, gave my YouTube channel. And I had a good half an hour conversation. It was nice because I wasn't bored the whole time that I was shopping. It seemed like a good kid. <laughs> He admitted that the reason he'd come into the store was he'd, he'd seen some young ladies come in and he kind of wanted to have a conversation with them, but that didn't pan out. Uh, I, I, I understand. I, I was once there a long time ago, but I have since caught myself a lovely, a lovely young lady. Yes, she's about my age, so don't anybody get any weird ideas. At the time that we got married, she was young. She still is in my book. And she's still just as lovely as the day I married her. And I'm still just as crazy as the day she met me. It's fun to meet new people. And Austin, I, I hope you don't mind me mentioning you. Glad to have met you. Forgive me for thinking you were a bit of a creeper at first. Hope you're, hope you're watching and hope you enjoy what I have to, to share with the world. I am not in any way, by any means, rich in goods. But I have plenty to say and plenty of riches and personality to share and unfortunately I had to put a my, bit of my physical riches into the gas pump not much thankfully because I usually only spend about three bucks max fuel there's a little fuel setting here on this little button here for the Honda you turn your key to the middle setting hit your fuel button up pops the fuel door I always put my scooter on the center stand. 87 octane. The Honda PCX takes regular gas. You don't have to do anything fancy. I just kind of keep an eye on the pump to make sure I'm not pumping too quickly because that'll cause it to bubble over. I also keep an eye on the filler. And to be careful when removing the filler, I will admit there's a bit of paranoia that comes with riding a motorcycle. You never know what people are doing when they're coming up behind you. I, I get a little concerned when somebody's just kind of looking as they're kind of passing around me. Yes, yeah, when I'm riding, I'm usually armed. But, come on, that's a last resort. But I do wear gloves with armor. There's a reason I wear gloves with armor. I hope that wasn't a rude gesture in any language. But just to show you the armor on my glove. There's two reasons I wear gloves with armor. The first reason is, should I be in a wreck? I have 
protection of my knuckles and fingers and such. The second is, should someone assault me, I have a possibility of defending myself and doing a little bit of damage in the process. Okay, it's a re reality. Um, it is possible to get scooter jacked. It's happened in this area. I'm trying to think where it was, but it did happen in this area at one point. A while ago, though. I don't remember exactly the place that it happened, but I do remember that it occurred. I remember seeing the news story and being somewhat taken aback. That's when I started carrying a gun when I started riding. It's quite a nice night compared to last night. Last night I didn't even bother. I did not even bother to put on the video. It just, it, there was no point. The gentleman on the Honda PCX forums commented how he wondered how difficult it was to do the motovlogging thing with talking and riding at the same time. And I'll tell you, it depends on what's going on. On a rainy night, no way I do not motovlog. And I don't motovlog on a rainy night because it's just dangerous. Okay, that's interesting. If they ever do introduce lane splitting to this state, they will have to tell that gentleman not to open his door without looking very carefully to make sure there's no motorcyclists coming. It's a bit windy tonight. It's pushing me around quite a bit. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a windy night ride. I love to be blown across the road and into the guardrail. It just makes my day. Okay, that is sarcasm. About five years ago, six years maybe, I went to visit a buddy of mine, my, my buddy who rides the Elite 110. Okay, that's kind of cool. Ha. I love that effect with the uh, fog behind me. Looks like a stormtrooper or something. Anyway, I went to visit my buddy Kevin over in Terry Hill. And as I was coming back, I was just going down 322, about ready to cross under 222. And I got blown off the road right in front of Bergstrass Lutheran Church. Physically blown off the road. I think I pissed off that Volvo driver a little bit ago by getting around him because I could. He's been following me rather closely for quite a little while. Get rid of that guy because he's bothering me. That was that was a little bit too creepy. I turned on my right turn signal and he turned on his very shortly afterwards so I said screw it you know what I'm gonna go ahead and go straight but he's freaking me out the last thing you want as a motorcyclist is somebody road raging on you in my case I have 286 pounds of bike and that's it it's teeny tiny and then on top of that I have 180 to 190 pounds depending on what I ate for breakfast so the stark reality is, I am not going to face off very well against a one to two ton motor car. This is not going to happen. He's going to win in that particular matchup. I am not going to win. There will be no winning there. There's a recent video that shows a guy is hardly getting run over by somebody in a, in a Honda, I think. Because the guy in the Honda was mad at him. So he ran over the guy in the Harley. I'm sure the guy's car was really royally screwed up, but he messed up the Harley worse and actually injured the rider, from what I understand. So anyway, be safe, folks. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions, by all means, comment or message me, and I will be happy to address them in a later video. God bless you. Shoot and fool out.